Well, in a 24-hour period, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys dressed like he's a small-town high school football coach. Why he dresses the way he does, like he's headed out with a whistle around his neck with the three-by-five card of what the practice periods are for that day is beyond me. But the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, looking like a small-town high school football coach, frankly sounding like one, too, is sitting in front of a weird makeshift set that looks like some ninth grader put it together. Well, this guy, who's a multi-billionaire, just poured gasoline on his team's most pressing issues. He then decided to just set a match and drop it in there on day one of his team's training camp. That's what the owner of the Dallas Cowboys has done. Doing what he always does, he, Jerry Jones, has generated national news and I don't know what the I don't know if the focus I think most of the focus, particularly in my business, is people trying to figure out where he was going or what exactly it means. And you know, he he started that that fire, but he's also generating for good reason a lot of attention because it was a completely nonsensical, weird, rambling news conference. And he was awkward in every way, including the people sitting around him. It could not have been handled any worse by your Dallas Cowboys. He made no sense at all, and for the better part of an hour at least, it was Joe Biden-like. It was awkward, it was uncomfortable, and he sounded like a nut. So, uh, let me rearrange what he meant, um, and I can outline how the most important people are affected. You know, the biggest storylines of the offseason are now the biggest storyline of the preseason, which will also turn into the biggest storylines of the early season because the owner is a nut. He thinks he's not a nut, but he came off as a nut. So, all right, I'll do this. Um, he, he, in the case of the man sitting, I think, to his right, um, if you're looking at the stage, the stage it really looked like somebody just threw together some tables for a picnic to pour some lemonade. Um, the coach sitting to his, the man sitting next to his right is a fat guy to his right. That's the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And that person is now completely engulfed in flames. Okay? On the first day of the season... Jerry Jones all but said, and he may have said it, we just couldn't quite understand him, but Jerry Jones all but said, the fat guy sitting next to me is dead man walking. That's the first thing that should stand out. You're fired, Mike McCarthy, before practice even started. Tell me I'm wrong. So the main characters and where they stand. Um... Okay, Jerry Jones as the main character. He tried to say yesterday. Let me, let me. I, you know, everyone's everyone's trying to pick this apart. I, I think I've got this. Um, what he wanted to say yesterday, what he thought he was tr- saying. Of course, he doesn't know. He's he's out of it. Um, but what he was trying to say is, I'm not paying anybody right now because I can't pay anybody that wants to be paid right now. And even if I could pay anybody right now, I'm not going to pay them, and I won't pay them until we win more than one playoff game. That was what he was trying to do for more than an hour. And a lot of people would say, well, thank you, Jeff, for clarifying. Thank you for translating. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, he's got a point there. Actually, he doesn't. No. No, that's not accurate. Um, I believe that's the message he meant to send. In some ways, it does make sense. Um, In other ways, it's just crazy. Uh, Jerry Jones tried to sell you on the idea that it's going to take some sort of ridiculous amount of time to figure out how best to pay his three stars. That's Dak Prescott, that's receiver C.D. Lamb, uh, that's Russian Micah Parsons, and oh, by the way, his head coach. But he's not saying, I'm trying to figure out how to pay him. I'm setting the fat guy on fire. Okay, he's fired before we've even had practice. Got it? Yeah, he is. I'm pretty sure he knows it. And if he didn't know it before, all he had to do there was sit there in silence as his owner just set him on fire. 
Um, so that's why I think Jerry Jones was trying to sell everyone. You just, you, in other words, you don't get how complicated my world is. This math, man, this payroll, is, it's just complicated stuff, and you people would know it. So let me give you dumb analogies to try to make it make sense for you. That's what he was trying to do. Um, those are items he couldn't explain, didn't know, there's no how, and I don't think he ever will be able to explain it to you. I think this will happen almost daily now for the next couple of months. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, as the manager of the Cowboys football team, okay, as the guy who handles the payroll, handles the players, and, I don't know, parking spaces even, I don't even know. But as the manager of the Cowboys football team, he gets an F for presentation skills, okay? Now, you could say, well, that's not very nice, Jeff. He's 104 years old, and look at his face. Why well, can't even get a hat to sit on his head properly, so that's mean of you, Jeff. Of course, he has no doesn't have good presentation skills. He's 105. Well, he gets an F. No one would have any idea what he was doing yesterday. He doesn't even know what he was trying to say. So he gets an F there. He gets an F for doing, and this is the important part. He gets an F. If you want to be generous, give him a D minus for doing absolutely nothing to make his team better. And he's done nothing to make his team better for almost an entire year. Okay? And he's trying to convince you, I would love to make my team better, but it's more complicated than that. That is mostly a lie. And he hasn't even tried that we can tell. And if he's tried, he's failed miserably. Because if he were the general manager and somebody else owned the team and they said, hey, man, get this stuff fixed between now and August, he would get an F and he would get fired. That's what an owner would do in this case. Um, he gets a D for not making any ground. I'm being generous again with a D. I mean, I, pfft, D plus. If anyone ever get a D plus, Does, that never even happens. Uh, a D for not making any ground in negotiating with his quarterback. That we can tell. Because his quarterback has commented. And quarterback, what the quarterback has said is maybe the most substantial comments in maybe in his entire career. Um, so from what I can tell, you get a D, D minus for not being able to negotiate with your quarterback. This stuff should have been decided. The next three months should have been decided and should be very clear before you start the first day of practice. And obviously none of it is. And we can tell that by the comments of the quarterback. So we get to D for that. Um, and then the most important, in my opinion, the most important player on the team um, that's C.D. Lamb. I, I'd be generous in giving him a D- minus for that. Um, if you can't and won't pay the stars, which is what he tried to tell you, then you could have used the stars, found a way to work, deal make, negotiate. You could use those stars, Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb, as examples. They're very valued in the market. These are not pieces of furniture you set out and put free Okay, these are really, really valuable assets the owner has. He's done nothing with them. If you can't afford them, he couldn't even sell them. And we don't even know if he tried. He had a chance, had a chance to get maximum value. If he can't pay these guys, he could have, he could have gotten something in return, a lot. You ever watch Pawn Stars? I kind of like Pawn Stars. I don't even know if it's around anymore. He hasn't even done that. He doesn't even pull up to the pawn shop. And I've been to that pawn shop. It's not at all what it is on TV. But he's done nothing. He's been a horrible general manager. Horrible. Uh, could have picked up draft picks. Could have picked up players. Could have picked up cash. And whatever. Um, his He's acting like he's... He just he's been stopped. He can't he can't deal make and, and that's just that's ridiculous. He acts like all this stuff snuck up on him and this has been I've mentioned this eight months ago. This is very issue. Everybody has. It didn't sneak up on him. Uh, yes, he's financially boxed in, but if his plan is to make Dak Prescott and CD Lamb prove themselves by winning a playoff game, if you really want to go old school hard ass and say, Ooh, you show them, Jerry, if he really is out there to sit there at that table, that makeshift table with a goofy looking hat on his head and a whistle around his neck, and if his goal is to say, Hey, everybody, and hey, CD Lamb and Dak Prescott and everybody else, 
everybody else that's listening to me today, you have to prove yourselves by winning some playoff games. If that's what you think he meant, and he might have, and if that's what you think is a good idea, I think you're a fool. That's a really stupid way to manage. He's a bad manager, and you're a fool if you think that's a good idea right now. You know why? They've proven themselves, you dorks. They've earned their raise. (laughs) What more would you like them to do? Oh, go win some games. I see. All right. Hmm. I'm sorry, where along the way did that wide receiver for the Cowboys that led the league in receptions, I'm sorry, what did he do wrong? Everybody else seems to be getting paid. They've earned their raise, and you're a fool with the way you've handled it. Holding them, like treating them like they're some sort of intern getting you coffee is a really, really bad way to go about this business particularly when you have somebody who works. They're, neither one of those guys, certainly not publicly and on the field, is Aaron Rodgers. Okay? They're not lousy jerks. They play hard, and they deliver. It's pretty valuable in that business. So Jerry Jones had a bad day, and he is in Joe Biden territory. And I don't know if anyone can take the keys from it, but he is in Joe Biden territory. Okay, if they need a consultant to come in, Nancy Pelosi comes in and says, here's the way you take the keys from the old guy. You better do something because he's really messed it up. Uh, Mike McCarthy is the head coach and Mike McCarthy is dead man walking. He's done. (laughs) I think he knows he's done. He sat next to his boss who all but turned to him and said, because I don't even know if he knew who was at the table. This is the boss. But he all but turned to him and said, you win two playoff games or Bill Belichick and his loving 23-year-old girlfriend is my coach. Now, I'm okay with that because I was saying a year ago, you get blown out at home by the Green Bay Packers. You need to go. Um, Mike McCarthy shouldn't be sitting where he is. Mike McCarthy shouldn't be around to be dead man walking. That's not really fair to anybody. It's not a good idea. And it's really bad management. This is the second part of his horrific management. But he's sitting there. And I don't know what kind of, you know, I don't know how many of you have uh, thought, well, I got another several months at my, at my employer and they pretty much told me I'm toast. I don't know how well you would do. Bill Belichick and the loving 23-year-old girlfriend have all but moved their furniture into a house in Dallas, in my opinion. They might be moving, and Mike might have to sleep on their couch, is the way I think this is playing out on the very first day of practice. Um, pro, pro football talk, uh, Mike Florio, who I like, um, does a show on a podcast. I like him because he thinks. Uh, I like him because he's clear. Uh, I like him because there's some substance to him. Uh, I you know, he, I think he was more polite than I am. I've said that Mike McCarthy's dead man walking and his owner just, you know, set him on fire in front of the United States public. Mike McCarthy, the Cowboys head coach, has a chance to prove himself this year as a lame duck. It used to be it was a bad thing for a coach to be a lame duck. Nobody wanted to have their coach in the final year of the contract. It doesn't go well. And then at some point, teams decided, ah, what the hell? So what if it makes it harder for the coach? to send the message when things are rocky, when adversity strikes, when you have to get through to the locker room and you've got guys there who are saying, why are we listening to him? He's not gonna be here next year anyway. So you wanna have that promise, that threat, that reality, that when we get to the end of the season, if things don't go the way they're supposed to, somebody's gonna kick ass and take names. Oh, and it's not gonna be the guy who's currently the coach. There's gonna be a clean slate. There's gonna be a new boss. So it is valuable to have a coach who isn't under contract only through the current season. And McCarthy told the Dallas Morning News that this is a challenge. Yes, it's a challenge. Of course it's a challenge. It's always better to be under contract beyond this year if you're a head coach of a team. It's easier to send a powerful message. It's easier to hold a team together. It's easier to find a way out of the darkness when it looks like you're done by the time Thanksgiving rolls around. Okay, you got the idea. Uh, Mike McCarthy also said... He's toast. He, sh- he shouldn't be sitting there anyway. I'm not, you know, I mean, it's, you don't want anybody to get fired, but uh, that's, that's the business. Um, that's, the point is that his boss is messing this up, too. I mean, he's, really just a, he's really handling things terribly. Everyone's had the boss before in their life where you think, man, that person sucks as a manager. 
the old man is is, is messing everything up. He's just not handle anything correctly right now. So, all right, he's toast. Uh, that's uh, Bill Belichick and his loving new twenty uh, three year old girlfriend. That's they're they're in t- they're going to be in town on a tandem bike any day now. Uh, Dak Prescott is a trigger for football fans. I can't figure out completely why. Uh, it really does trigger people. He finished second in MVP voting. Uh, he's anywhere between the sixth and tenth or eleventh best quarterback in the NFL. He is now. That can bother you. I don't. You know. I mean. I see. It seems to bother you. But okay. Um, just so you know. You could argue most quarterbacks in that business, almost all, not name a Holmes, uh, are overpriced to some extent, but they all get contracts. Nobody operates by saying, I have a top 10 quarterback. I think I'm just going to leave him hanging. Yeah, we'll figure it out as we go along. I mean, just nobody operates that way in that business. So Dak Prescott is also the best face of the franchise. And the Cowboys, I mean, they, they couldn't have a better face of the franchise. He's the anti-Jerry Jones. He's the anti-Aaron Rodgers, wrapped up into one. Nobody is more measured and calm publicly. He may be the devil privately for all we know, but publicly, they're lucky. They could be a bigger circus than they are. But this dude shows up and just goes to work. But he just said more in three sentences than he's ever said. And he mentioned the word freedom two to three times just yesterday in an interview because he knew what his owner had said. He knew he knows how this stuff plays out. Look, the guys, he he gets it. He knows where he is. Um, And he was he was measured as usual. And I think he was very respectful as usual publicly. But his message to his boss, I think, was, and to everyone else, I think it was pretty clear. Um, and I think he all but said, man, this dude has screwed this thing up, and I'm going to look around. Okay? Uh, he said, quote, this is Dak Prescott, who, by the way, uh, 2016 Offensive Rookie of the Year, three Pro Bowls. Uh, of course, the Cowboys haven't been past the divisional round of the playoffs since 1995. He's two and five in the playoffs, and that's what, you know, that's what triggers people. I want to be here, but when you look, you got that? I want to be here, but, there's your answer. I want to be here, but when you look up, all the great quarterbacks I watched played for other teams. That's not something to fear. It may be a reality for me one day. It may not even be my decision. (laughs) That's the freedom that I have now. Oof. Uh, Yeah, he's right. Yes, he has perspective. Um, and he made a comment saying, I owe guys in this league to get paid. In other words, look, quarterback market is on fire, and I, I, I need to do it myself. So, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, nobody can hold that against the guy. Uh, my, my point is that if you know he wants to leave, if you guys have sort of this understanding or no understanding, or the quarterback sends you a message, I, I may not be sticking around, man. You need to work to get something for him. Or or what Jerry Jones could have done or handed it off to someone. In other words, to say, you know what, everyone, I can't speak clearly. I don't even know what I'm saying. But my son, my grandson, we have brought in a translator. Here she is. She's going to tell you what I need to be saying So, because I can't really articulate anything. And that person, the translator, would say, hey, First day of camp, I know this, Dak Prescott knows this, his agent knows this, we all know this. You're going to ask every minute of every day where we are in his contract. And let me tell you where we are in his contract. As of right now, he's in the final year of a contract. We don't have a new contract. And you know what? We Both sides have agreed. And we're telling you today, between now and the end of the season, we're not doing another contract. We'll visit it then. Both sides have decided that's what we want to do, and that's what we're going to do. That's as clear as we can be. There. That took 26 seconds. It's not that hard. If that's the position they both take, I get it. You would get it. But instead, he did just the opposite and just started pouring gas all around that stupid little setup they had. Just took a gas can out. So here, blah, 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 blah. Let me set it on fire. Some stuff. Oh, gosh. Mike McCarthy's on fire. 
I mean, you, you couldn't handle the afternoon worse than the old man handled it. Uh, then you get to C.D. Lamb. Um, by the way, Dak Prescott in an open market. You know, if Dak Prescott said right now, for sale, for sale. I know he triggers all of you. I know you think he's the devil or whatever's going on out there. I think he's good there. Um, but you don't want to pay him, don't pay him. I get it. But if he said for sale right now, he would get $60 million a year. He might just be the highest paid player in the NFL. But if not, for sale right now, he would be one of the two or three highest paid players in the NFL right now. I mean, if he stuck that realtor sign, you know, the realtors put their face on everything. If his realtor had their face right there, he or she is with that windblown look for sale, he would, it would be sold within five minutes and he would get probably $60 million a year. And there might be several offers at that. So, I mean, that's, that's the market. That's what he would get. Uh, C.D. Lamb is, I think, the most important player to Dallas right now. Um, you, you know, they're a good defensive team, and they better be great or else. They're staring at eight wins. But C.D. Lamb, I, I think he's the most important player to them. I think he's the most interesting part of their franchise right now. He led the league in receptions. He's among the best for this position in the game. And that is a position that is now one of the most valuable, two or three most valuable positions in football. That guy is really really important that's the understatement um so that position of wide receiver of 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 superstar receiver is what running back was 20 30 years ago right i mean the cowboys have he's the equivalent of their earl campbell or you know their emmett smith or i mean go down the list of of superstar running backs that were the entire offense that's him He's proven it. It's no fluke. He's that good. There's no, oh, you got to prove it to me, kid. That is, that is an asinine way to approach him. That is asinine. He's our, he can sit there and say, really? I'm sorry, what more would you like me to do than catch 135 passes and bail your ass out? You old fool. Who do you think you're talking to? The guy has done everything. He plays ridiculously hard. It is a short shelf life. No one listening right now wouldn't say, give me a break, old man. I'm one of the three best in the game, and they're all getting paid today, and their clubs threw out a red carpet for them. And you act like I'm trying to steal your car. Handled horribly by the owner. Horribly. Do they have time? I guess. Um, He's pissed. Okay, and uh, I mean, I, I think he'll show it more often, and probably should. He's pissed. He hasn't been paid. His option is to hold out and and or force a trade. That's his option, and I can't even tell you how many teams would be lined up, begging for that guy. So he can hold out and or force a trade. Um, Jerry Jones should have and should have been working on it, been proactive one way or another. He may show up to work, but he's not going to like where he's working. He's not going to like it. He may still play hard. I, you know, it's just not, it's not a good scene. It's not a good vibe. It's not a good way to manage people. Um, lose him, and he doesn't show up in the Dallas offense. Listen to me now. It's absolutely neutered. It's an eight-win eight team without him. Maybe not even that. That's your offense. If I'm the quarterback or I'm the head coach, you're screwed. If this guy's not out there, you're screwed. Absolutely screwed. I don't care what kind of plays you call. If I'm the quarterback, I'm terrified because I'm going to have to hold on the ball longer, which produces injury. I mean, it is the, the domino effect of not having that guy like on any team is, is huge. He has all the leverage. Now, Jerry Jones can be a hard ass, which I guess some people like, um, and they'll start finding him, and they'll you know he'll talk trash about it, and eventually he may have to show up. Um, good luck to you in your first game if you go to Cleveland without him. Good luck. And I tell you what, if you make it a few weeks into your season and you still don't have him, you're going to have your ass kicked by the Baltimore Ravens, and the public is going to flip out. 
and he's going to be worth more. Um, at best, he plays this season for Dallas. Um, you know, all three stars at best stay healthy, uh, but they're not happy. They're grumpy, whatever. I mean, they'll, you know, CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy aren't going to talk trash. You're lucky. It's not going to be, it's not going to be an Aaron Rodgers like thing. So nobody did anything on day one to take this story out of the headlines. The owner didn't do anything but pour gas on it. He handled it horribly. This entire financial dumpster fire hangs over the Cowboys now. Nobody's happy. It's a bad setup and a bad look, and somebody needs to take the keys away from the old man.